My name is Lamia Yadullah. Today I'll be talking about electrical rooms. Building a code compliant electrical room involves creativity, coordination between engineering trades and architects. In this presentation, the focus is meeting code requirements without compromising personal safety. Existing or new, electrical room has to comply with NEC, IBC, fire, mechanical, plumbing, and structural codes. Here is a list of electrical equipment that could be found in electrical rooms. Dimensions of the room and code requirements could change based on the layout and number of devices installed. One of the requirements is illumination and means of egress. NEC requires enough lighting about electrical equipment. However, it doesn't specify the amount of lighting for different locations. For design purposes, NESC and IES provide illumination level for different rooms and applications. During emergency, a minimum of one and a half hours illumination is required along the path of exit at the floor. Marking is required by NEC and typically it includes voltage rating, current rating, available fault current, manufacturer's names, etc. NEC 230 is dedicated to electrical services. In general, size of the electrical room and equipment depends on total electrical load, voltage ratings, capacity, and the working clearance about equipment. Please note, NEC does not permit working space be used for storage purposes. Working clearances about electrical equipment are provided in details in Chapter 110.26. The area in front of the equipment is called working space and is 6.5 feet high. The area immediately above the equipment is dedicated electrical space and it's 6 feet high. These areas have to stay clear at all times. The required working space clearances in front of an electrical equipment are voltage base. As voltage rating increases, the working space increases as well. One of the reasons for that is the tools used to install, energize, de-energize, and maintain electrical equipment. Here I'm combining mechanical and plumbing in one slide, as those are considered foreign to electrical equipment. NEC does not allow mechanical or plumbing equipment within electrical equipment clearance space. However, in case you absolutely have to install foreign systems above the dedicated electrical space, then electrical equipment and conductors must be suitable for the environment and conditions of use. NEC provides information on how to make the design or the layout code compliant. In some cases, Providing ventilation is required to prevent the accumulation of an explosive mixture. Therefore, coordinating the location of foreign systems and ventilation openings with the electrical equipment become critical to preventing code violations. Sprinkler systems are allowed in electrical rooms. IBC provides a list where automatic sprinkler systems are required in different building groups. If for any reason there is no sprinkler system installed in an electrical room, then a two-hour fire-rated enclosure is required by an FPA. This includes walls, floors, ceiling, doors, and protection for penetrations. Where a dry type transformer is to be installed, NEC requires a separation of at least 12 inches from combustible material or fire-resistant heat-insulated barriers. Transformers rated at greater than 112.5 kVA shall be installed in a transformer room of fire-resistant construction, minimum fire rating of one hour. NEC 700.12 requires approved automatic fire suppression systems or minimum of one hour fire-rated space where source of power such as generators are installed indoors. Entrance to and exit from working space. In general, NEC allows one entrance or exit as long as the requirements in 
110.26 C2A and C2B are met. As in this figure, both access panels and the front of the equipment must have working space clearances. If our equipment is 6 feet or larger and rated at minimum 1200 amp, then two doors are required. One door at each end of the working space is required to comply with NEC 110.26 C2 and C3. Building N and FPA codes require electrical room door swing in the direction of egress. NEC is a bit more specific about meeting this requirement by providing the rating of 800 amp equipment and the distance between equipment and the doors as well. As you can see in this figure, there is no 25 feet space between equipment and each door. Also, our electrical room is right next to an office area. The office area is not considered egress. Therefore, panic hardware shall be provided with each door leading to egress. Doors opening into the egress shall not block the passageway. IBC provides some rules to calculate where doors need to be installed with respect to the width of the corridor without compromising fire and building code requirements when doors are open at 90 or 180 degrees. These are the books that I have used for this presentation. Please keep in mind, NEC and other code books require minimum for a safe design. I hope you find this information beneficial to your future projects, and have a great day.